The black bear is harvested for its fur as well as its meat, but it is possible to use several other parts. On va mettre le coupon sur la bête parce que c'est vraiment la première chose à faire avant de manipuler la bête. Several precautions must be taken when gutting a black bear. You will need a knife and a gutting knife well sharpened, protective gloves, nylon tie wraps, as well as a container of ice water in order to cool down the carcass as fast as possible. We do recommend, however, that you work on the animal away from flies because they ruin the meat and the pelt. If you wish to have a head mount or full body mount, you should first contact your taxidermist. Generally, the first step is to place the animal on its back in order to make an incision around the anus. When the rectum is free, make sure that it is tightly tied in such a way that fecal matter will not come out and contaminate the meat. Next, make a small incision, 2.5 centimeters below the sternum. Then use a gutting knife to split open the abdomen down to the genital area, ideally by tilting the knife upward. Here we recommend using this knife with a blade that is curved up to prevent piercing the guts. Now cut the tissues holding the rectum in place. Once the rectum moves freely, we grab the base of the large intestine and pull the bowels inward. The next step is to cut the diaphragm that separates the heart and lungs from the other internal organs. Cut the tissues holding the diaphragm to the carcass by following the thoracic cavity. It is not recommended to eat the liver or kidneys because of the high level of cadmium they may contain. To prevent contamination of the meat, take special care to avoid piercing the stomach, intestines, or the bladder. Now, remove the content of the thoracic cavity and the bowels of the animal. When gutted, turn the animal over to drain off the blood. We recommend here to put a container of ice water inside the carcass to cool it down. To skin a bear, you will need a sharpening tool, rounded blade knives, a butcher knife with a straight blade, a gutting knife, protective gloves, and nylon tie wraps. It is important to get the pelt off the animal quickly to cool it down. This will prevent the pelt from overheating and decreasing in value. First of all, attach the legal tag through the nose and make sure it stays attached to the pelt until it goes to market. Now, cut from the throat downward, always following the flow of the fur to merge with the opening performed during gutting. Then, incisions are made from the paws through the elbow up to the first ventral incision at the first rib from the top. For the hind feet, the cut must start from the heel through the back of the knee up to the anus. The cut should follow the natural line separating the fur on the belly from the fur on the back. When the cuts are completed, the pelt of the bear will be removed using a round bladed knife beginning with the paws. They will be skinned up to the wrist and cut into the joint. The pads and the fingers will be prepared subsequently.
We finish skinning the head. You must cut carefully around the neck and ears. Meticulously work around the head as close to the skull as possible. Then with great care, work the skin off around the eyes, the lips, and the nose in order to keep them intact. When you remove the lower lip from the jaw, make sure you do not cut the skin. When the pelt is completely removed, hang it in a shady area. Once the pelt has cooled down, we proceed, if necessary, to its preparation towards freezing. We fold the sides and the paws inward, and then we roll up the pelt, starting from behind. The fur must face outward because none of the leather should be exposed to the air in order to avoid freeze burns. The head must rest on top to freeze as fast as possible and for the legal tag to stay accessible at all times. The pelt is placed in an airtight bag. Then remove as much air as possible before storing it in the freezer. For hunting, you must, within 48 hours of leaving your hunting site, register your bear at a control station. For trapping, the period is 15 days. You must register your animal by producing the pelt or the whole animal. The use of the mobile application, Zone Chasse, is very useful to locate the nearest station. To recover the meat, you will need plastic wrap, freezer paper, a knife well sharpened, and protective gloves. We recommend here to cut the bear in pieces in order to more easily keep the meat stored in a cooler. The bear, once cut in quarters, will be easy to store during transportation. The first step is to separate the hind legs. We separate the pelvic bone by cutting off this ligament to free the hind leg. The second step is to remove the loin, also called strip loin and sirloin. We simply cut here at the end of the pelvic bone up to the base of the spine and then we follow the vertebra. Next, we slowly cut with the point of the knife along the ribs to remove the whole loin. The third step is to take as many chunks of meat off the carcass as possible, in particular around the shoulders. It is recommended to remove as much fat as possible because it greatly affects the taste of the meat. You can bring the meat to your butcher or prepare it in pieces. Wrap the pieces of meat in plastic wrap, followed by freezing paper and a second layer of plastic wrap. Then place the pieces in a plastic bag and store them in the cold in a cooler or in the refrigerator. Even if it is not mandatory, it is recommended to keep the registration form to the meat because some butchers may ask for it. Approximately 1% of black bears are infected with a parasite that causes trichinolosis. Just cook the bear meat thoroughly to eat it safely. During a blind taste test, bear meat was ranked first ahead of moose, caribou, and deer. 
Many recipes are available on the mobile application Zonchas, and cookbooks are available free of charge on the website of the Fédération Québécoise des Chasseurs et Pêcheurs. When you are ready to flesh the pelt, take it out of the freezer and let it thaw completely. You will need knives, hooks, brushes, a fleshing beam, scrapers, sawdust, a plywood board, borax, nails, a hammer and protective gloves. However, before you start fleshing the pelt, you must finalize the preparation of the paws. Foot pads can be preserved by one of two methods. The first technique is to make a cut that goes around the foot pad, leaving a thin strip of fur with the pad. You also can preserve the pad in whole simply by turning over the paw on itself. Now, dislocate each finger at the last joint in order to leave the claws on the pelt. You can then remove the fat from the pads with your knife. You now must brush the fur to remove any materials stuck to the hair because they could make some holes in the pelt when flushing. You must also wash any blood stains on the fur and remove the cartilage of the nose. It is recommended to use a fleshing beam to remove all traces of fat from the pelt. It is important here to split the ears to allow them to dry completely and prevent them from overheating that would make hairs fall off the pelt during tanning. To do this, separate the cartilage of the leather of the ear using a pointed knife by turning the ear inside out. You also need to split the lips to allow adequate drying. Now, remove, using a scraper, all traces of fat and flesh, starting at the head and working down to the tail. You may wish to use some sawdust that will absorb fat and will offer resistance for the scraper. If you wish to have your pelt tanned, put it in an airtight plastic bag and store it in a freezer before taking it to the tannery. If you choose to market the pelt raw and dry, the next step is boarding. You need to nail the pelt to a plywood board three quarters of an inch thick, the fur side placed against the board to allow the leather to dry in the open air. First, begin by inserting a plywood form for the head and nail the base of the neck. Then, nail the tail, making sure you do not overstretch the pelt to prevent any reduction in fur density that could reduce its value. You should keep the natural shape of the animal. As a general rule, the width between the front paw armpits should be half the total length of the pelt. Continue by nailing the pelt in a symmetrical way on the leather edge following the outline of the pelt. For the lips and inside of the paws, add some borax. In order to make sure the ears are completely dry, insert a form on the fur side in the ears, which are turned inside out to let them dry.
In order to allow the pelt to dry gradually and evenly, it must be set up in a cool, well-ventilated location. You must never expose the pelt directly to a fan, to sunlight rays, or any source of intense heat. Five to seven days later, when the pelt is dry, fold the paws inward and fold the pelt with the leather on the outside. You can now store it in a dry, cool place away from insects until it goes to market. When the pelt of the bear cannot be marketed because of its low quality, you can take off the claws, which have a market value, among other things, for jewelry making. You must never boil the claws because they would lose their value. You need to remove the claws while leaving the bone of the first joint inside the nail and let them dry in a well-ventilated location. Other parts of the bear can be sold like the complete skull or the canine teeth individually. For the male, you can also collect the penile bone also called baculum. You will need, however, to simmer these parts slowly in water to remove the flesh more easily. The fat of bear is an excellent waterproofing agent. If you wish to use it, Collect portions of fat and melt it in a water bath. Then transfer it to a glass jar and let it cool down. To know more, consult the Fédération des Trappeurs Gestionnaires du Québec. <laughs>